Hello, Chris from ePianos here. Another video for you from The Shed of Dreams. I'm making this video because I want to help you make the right decision when you're buying your new piano. Not necessarily to discourage you from buying the Yamaha P125. Indeed, this video may only serve to confirm that it is the right one for you because the P125 is a very good piano. Indeed, it's one of our most popular ones. And there are plenty of videos, websites, brochures, etc. out there that will tell you what the P125 has. And you've most likely already absorbed that information. But what I want to do in this video, in the spirit of us trying to be the most helpful piano shop in the UK, is to tell you what it hasn't got and what it's missing that I think will be helpful to you as someone who's looking to buy a piano in this price bracket and in this type of range. If this video is helpful, please do me a favor and press the thumbs up icon below this video. It really helps us reach more people on YouTube. And if you like this type of video, then make sure you press subscribe as well to be notified when we've released a new one. And finally, make sure you check out the ePianos website for the latest deals on new and a huge selection of pre-owned digital pianos and keyboards. So point number one is don't expect a huge amount of voices from this piano. By voices, I mean the sounds that it will make. Um, there's only 24 and it covers the basics. It gives you a little selection of pianos, um, a few variations of electric piano strings and organs. It's, it's quite simple by design because all of the focus is on giving you quality piano and a quality feel. If you or the person you're buying for is used to playing one of those little 61 note keyboards that are around the hundred pounds mark, you might be used to having hundreds of sounds, loads of different types of strings, synthesizers, pianos, guitars, drums, trumpets, saxophones, etc., dogs barking, machine gun sounds, helicopter noises, all of those things, which can be quite fun to play with, particularly if you're buying for a child. P125 doesn't have that. It's as I said, focused on giving you great piano sounds of a good quality, so it's by design, but don't expect loads and loads of voices on here. And that might be great for the way that you learn or the way that your child learns because it keeps it very focused. Point number two is the rhythms and accompaniments built into this piano, which you may have seen on the specifications, are very, very basic. They just give you an, a very simple bass accompaniment, no extra instruments. So you're not going to sound like you're playing with a full band. Yamaha do have keyboards that do that. For example, the DGX670, which is a similarly portable piano. See our videos on that one. And when you play with the accompaniments on that one, you get a whole band of different styles joining in with the guitar, bass, synthesizer, strings, everything. But P125 keeps it simple. It gives you a basic drum beat and a basic bass guitar backing for you to just play with. Also, you can't add things like drum fills, synchronized starts, or um, good endings. So you can't really put together a polished professional performance using the rhythms and accompaniments. They're more in there, more of a timing aid than anything at all. So don't expect anything special from the accompaniments built in. And again, this is by design. It's a nice little extra thing to have to play with occasionally, but again, the focus really is on piano touch and sound quality.
Point number three is to do with the chassis design itself. Um, uh, you've got a few buttons on the front, but this is a design thing again. It's designed to be very simple and plain. The unfortunate side effect of this is some of the controls require you to do rather clumsy um, multi-button and keyboard um, presses. So you can't, it's not as easy to do things like change the speed of the, the rhythm or the uh, metronome that's built into it or to change the rhythm type. Um, string uh, voice combinations are quite easy because you just press two buttons at the same time on the front panel, but there's a lot of multi-button and key holding uh, options on there that are a little bit clumsy. There is a useful guide that comes with it, but just beware that if you like everything on a screen um, with a touch screen, then this is not going to be the type of instrument for you. Indeed, it's very rudimentary, the controls on the front of it. There is a nice way that you can control everything within this using your smartphone or tablet, uh, using the Yamaha Smart Pianist app, which brings me on to my next point. Indeed, the Yamaha Smart Pianist app is um, very fun. We've got a video that goes into some detail with it and a blog of how to connect it to P125. But the point I really want to make is, while it's great that you can use this app to control what's on this piano, it does not connect wirelessly, unfortunately, via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or any system whatsoever. You have to use a cable with it to get it plugged into P125 and working. The cable does not come with the piano, so you won't find it in a box. You're going to have to buy it as an additional extra. See our website for which cables you'll need. I'll put the link in the description below. Point number five is what type of stand to put this on. Um, a couple of tips for you is avoid the single braced one. Here's a picture of a single braced stand and here's a picture of a double braced stand. Now avoid the single braced ones. We don't sell them on our website because really they're not very good for holding this this weight of keyboard. They, they're a little bit wobbly so just beware some websites will try and include a single braced one but I find them far too wobbly. What I've got it on in this video is a double braced stand um, here's the double brace one again for you. See the double bracing where it crosses over, much sturdier, no problem at all using it on stage. I've done it many, many times myself. Um, the, if you prefer a stand that actually screws into the bottom of P125, there is a specially made stand from Yamaha called the L125. Um, and as I said, it screws in the bottom and it's got a horizontal bar along as well. It's very, very sturdy. It almost makes it look like quite a nice bit of furniture. And it's not too difficult to remove it if you want to as well. Um, beware that if you want to use the three pedal unit, uh, the LP1, then that requires you to have the L125 stand because it's, it actually attaches to the horizontal panel along the back. So you need that wooden stand if you want to use the three pedals. You cannot use the three pedal unit with a cross frame stand. There's no way for it to attach. Now point number six is not immediately obvious, but it's possibly the most important thing to consider, and that's to do with the longevity of a P125 if you are learning to play as an adult or indeed as a child. Because while the keys are weighted, in fact they're probably some of the best weighted keys for this budget on the whole market and Yamaha have the heritage and the expertise and the technology to make very authentic weighted keys on their pianos, but they are still plastic keys and on some portable keyboards, granted more expensive ones, you have the option of having wooden keys on there, on the white keys at least, which is a touch more authentic, a little bit more like the real thing. And as you advance as a player and your, your um, skill level improves, you're going to start wanting features like that. 
It'll give you a chance to grow. The reason wooden keys are important is because they just recoil a little bit faster than plastic keys. They just don't quite have the density of plastic keys. And when you get into doing fast passages, it's very helpful to have something like wooden keys because it's great for the muscle memory. And of course, it helps you transfer then onto a traditional piano um, if you want to do exams or play a concert grand piano at the Royal Albert Hall for that matter. So over the long term, if you're buying for yourself or for a child that's learning to play, um, P125 is great. But if you think your standard's going to improve and you're going to take it very seriously in practice, then it might be worth looking at something a little bit better, like the Yamaha P515 or even a Yamaha Arius or Clavinova, because they will allow you to grow into them. But it's possible fingers crossed I suppose because it means you're you're progressing that you might well grow out of a P125 uh, in not too far in the distance. Now point number seven is to do with the sustain pedal um, that comes with this piano. Uh, if you don't know what a sustain pedal is, if this is going to be your first piano, uh, it's a way of just getting the sound of the piano when you press uh, a key to carry on. Uh, in, the way it works in a traditional piano is the, the dampener that was against the vibrating string um, comes off and allows the string to vibrate and the sound continues. It's going to become an essential part of your playing, believe me. It, P125 comes with a pedal but it's a little square one. Here's a picture of it. And we have found that you can knock it around with your feet a little bit, depending on the surface that you're on, although it does have a little grippy bit underneath it. Um, so it's worth considering upgrading your pedal to a better one that's a little bit more, a little bit heavier to start with and looks a little bit more and feels a bit more like a traditional one. And we have that on the ePiano's website. You can upgrade the pedal for a reduced price during the checkout process, but just wanted to make you aware of the type of sustain pedal that comes in the box with the P125. Now, point number eight is um, if you're looking for, the, if you're in the market for this type of piano um, because it's compact and space saving, then <clears throat> you need to know that there is a shorter version of this very piano and it's called the Yamaha P121 and it has 73 keys rather than 88 keys, 88 keys being the traditional length of a uh, piano. So a little bit shorter, it does everything the same way, the same speakers, uh, obviously it's a little bit lighter as well but not by much and it just gives you a little bit more of a compact piano. And my final point is um, to do with the output of this piano. If you're looking at the specifications on the Yamaha website, uh, I get a lot of questions about this because it appears to say that there's no MIDI output for controlling MIDI or sending your signal, MIDI signal to a computer. But there is. What that's referring to on the website is that there is no traditional multi-pin MIDI output on the Yamaha P25, P125, but you can still send a MIDI signal, you just do it from the USB to host connection, so it can be done. So if you're looking for a MIDI controller um, and you've come across this keyboard, uh, I'd recommend it because not only is it a high quality keyboard action with great samples built into it, but yes, you can use it as a MIDI controller as well if you need to. Well, I hope that video was useful to you. Um, I know sometimes it's quite useful to have things pointed out that equipment doesn't have because the brochures are so good at telling you what these items do have. And it's only when you get the thing back in your house that you realize, oh, it doesn't have this. And I'll, I wish I knew that it didn't have this. So if this video has been helpful to you, please do me a favor and press the thumbs up icon that's just below here. Um, consider pressing subscribe as well to stay up to date with us and have a look at the ePiano's website too. Um, if you have any questions about this, just leave them in the comments section below and we'll get right back to you. But thanks very much for watching that. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.